friends, Ashley from Ashley on Music Studio here today. We're gonna do an experiment in today's video. We're gonna see how quickly I can memorize music. And I'm a little nervous for today's video, to be honest, because this video was a request from someone. You know who you are. I've never done this before. This is gonna be a total experiment for me, and you're gonna get to watch me do it. So you might see me fall totally flat on my face, or not. We'll have to see. But basically, I'm gonna take a piece of music that I've never heard, and I'm going to play it one time, and then I'm gonna see if I can memorize it and play it from memory after just that one time of playing through it. Now, in this video, I'm gonna talk a lot about memory and the different kinds of memory and how they're at play here because you gotta learn something, right? <laughs> so that way, if I flop on my face, at least you'll still learn some stuff about memory. I have a couple other videos about memory and music and the different kinds of memory and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in watching some of those, you can check out my memory playlist right here. Let's see how this goes. All right, so this piece is called The Victoria Gallop. It's by Francis Johnson. He was an American composer that lived from 1792 to 1844. In order to find a composer that had a piece of music that I hadn't heard of before, I used a seat at the piano.com and I'll link that in the description below. And it's a really awesome nonprofit that I'm actually a part of. I do research and I enter stuff into the database. And our goal is to promote the works of historical and living composers that have been excluded from the canon of classical music repertoire. There's a ton of amazing composers in the database with beautiful works of music, so I highly suggest checking it out. And that's how I found Francis Johnson. So he's a composer that experienced a lot of racism during his life, and he lived in the United States. He wrote a couple of works for the piano. So this piece is called The Victoria Gallop, and I haven't really looked at it very much because I didn't want to cheat for the experiment. It's two pages long, it's on IMSLP, and I'll link that in the description below as well in case you want to print out the music and learn it yourself. And for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to look at the first 16 measures. I'm a little too scared to try to do the whole piece. So I'm going to do the first 16 measures and we'll see how it goes as an experiment. And then if it goes well, maybe I'll do a much more challenging piece or a much longer piece in another video. I'm going to play through it one time and then I'm going to see if I can take the music away and I'm going to see how much I can remember. I'm going to talk you through some of the kinds of memory that are at play and what might be happening when I'm doing this. So let's dive in. I'm going to play the first 16 measures. I've never heard this piece. I haven't really looked at the music at all other than to print it out. Let's try. So that's the first playthrough with music. Now I'm going to take this music away <laughs> and we'll see. I was really trying to digest as much information as possible while I had the music in front of me. So I was counting the rhythm in my head. I was listening to what it sounded like because that's really important to be able to remember something to know how it sounds like, what it sounds like. And I was also trying to analyze as much as possible as I could on that first read through. Now, this piece was a good choice for me because I didn't realize that it would, it would be so repetitive. And I also didn't realize that harmonically, meaning the chords would be simple. So the one thing that I noticed when I was playing through is that it was alternating between an F major chord and a C7 chord. And that was the harmonic structure of the entire piece. So that was really lucky because that's pretty simple. And I was able to remember that, which is nice. Um, the melody was really sweet and cute and memorable and singable. And so that, 
was very helpful for sure. The, the thing that I really am unsure about is the left hand, because while I remembered that it was an F chord and a C7 chord, I was really unsure on like, when I was supposed to be playing an octave in my left hand versus when I was supposed to be playing a single note in my left hand. And so I was kind of like improvising the left hand a little bit, playing the correct chords, but I know that I wasn't in fact playing the left hand correctly that whole time. And then the other thing is the melody was so repetitive, but towards the end of the first phrase and then the end of the second phrase, I couldn't exactly remember, remember how it ended. I remember it was slightly different than what came before it, but I couldn't remember exactly what the notes were. So that was also a little bit improvised. While I was going through that whole process, I was trying to apply as many forms of memory as possible. And like I mentioned, I have a lot of videos on memory that you can look up, but I'll just briefly cover it here so that you know what this process is like. There's muscle memory, which is being able to play something and then knowing what it feels like. There's not a lot of muscle memory that develops after one time of playing through a piece. So the muscle memory wasn't super helpful in this case, but muscle memory is really at play when you're learning a piece and when you've played a piece more than one time. My aural memory is how things sound. And I already mentioned that that's huge. I really needed to know what it sounded like if I was gonna be able to reproduce that sound. And so we always wanna be able to sing through our pieces or anticipate what's coming next just in our ears because that's really important. A visual memory is what things look like. And visual memory was definitely a little bit at play in that I knew where my hands were on the keyboard, but I hadn't looked at the music enough to be able to imagine what the sheet music looked like after only one playthrough. So that wasn't super helpful. And then cognitive memory is the memory that we really want to develop. That's what our ultimate goal is. And cognitive memory is kind of like a conglomeration of all of the other kinds of memory, plus like theoretical analysis or an analysis of the patterns that make up the piece so that you really understand. And I like to say the test for cognitive memory is if I could hand you a piece of manuscript paper and you could write the piece out, you know it's in your cognitive memory. If you can teach someone else the piece and you can talk them through the chord progressions and talk them through all of the notes, you probably have it in some of the layers of your cognitive memory. Now we're gonna experiment a little more. I'm gonna talk through the piece and I'm gonna try to get more of it into my cognitive memory. I'm gonna really focus on those things that I couldn't remember. I'm gonna give myself about one minute to talk through it and then I'm gonna play it one more time with music. Then I'm gonna take the music away and see how much I can remember. I notice that the left hand is doing octaves for the first two measures and anytime I have an F major chord, ha, okay, that's good to know. That's a great pattern. I can remember that. So anytime I have an F major chord in the left hand, which is basically alternating every two measures, I'm doing an octave. It's never a single note. It's always an F octave coming up to a broken F chord. That's good to know. Now, whenever I do the C7 chord, it's, ooh, that's a little trickier. Sometimes it's an E on the bottom. And then at the end of the first phrase, it's a C and a C and an E. I'm going to take a minute and scan through that. Now I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to look at the end of the first phrase in the melody and the end of the second phrase in the melody, because that definitely tripped me up and I wasn't sure exactly what that sounded like or what I was supposed to play there. Okay, let's try this one more time. from memory.
so that time I was able to remember the end of the first phrase, but I really could not remember what the heck I did the second time around, which is really interesting. I was able to remember the F octaves in the left hand, which was really great. And I was able to remember how the C7 chord came to be in the left hand, which was also really good. But I made one huge mistake with the octaves in the left hand because I'm playing the bottom note of the F chord on beats one and beat two, I was doing way too many octaves. And so that was wrong. And that confused me while I was trying to play through it from memory. I did eventually get to the correct ending there at the end, but that was rough. For some reason, my ear, I just couldn't remember what it sounded like. And if you can't remember what something sounds like, there's no chance that you're gonna be able to play it from memory. That was a fun experiment. Don't do this. <laughs> I wasn't doing this because I think you should do this. I was simply doing this because someone requested it and I thought it would be a fun experiment. The things that I learned in doing this are that first of all, I need more time to memorize. It's really hard to memorize after one or two playthroughs and I learned that I can get kind of the overall structure of a piece, but a lot of the little tiny details were going wrong. And that's actually a lot of what I see in people's practice. Oftentimes people are really good at getting like the overall idea, but then within that idea, there's lots of little things and lots of details that need some attention or need work. When we're memorizing a piece, we need to spend that time to make sure that we're doing something over and over in the correct way. Because if we're doing things inconsistently, so if we're making a mistake here and then a mistake here, and then another mistake, we're giving our brain mixed signals and we don't learn as well. So now that I've played that piece four times, I played it twice with music and twice without music. Every single time I played it, I played it differently. So this is not a great way to go about learning a piece or memorizing a piece. We need to spend a lot more time looking at, at what's going on and making sure that we're playing consistently. And I've talked about this in a lot of videos because when we play consistently, our brain starts to remember things. We start to recognize it as a pattern and then eventually it becomes a habit. And then eventually it's a process that we can do and we don't have to think so hard about anymore. This piece is definitely not there for me. I would need to play through it so many more times with the music. I would need to do a little bit more analyzation. I would need to get it better in my ear. I would probably need to listen to it several times. And there's lots of different things that you can do and lots of different tips that I have for how to get things into those different layers of memory. So check out that memory playlist. Once again, you can find it right here if you're interested in knowing how to memorize that. And thanks so much for sticking with me with this experiment. Let me know if you like this, if you thought this was fun. I'm, I'd be interested to know if I tried it with a much more challenging piece, what would happen? Because I was decently able to like do some semblance of music there, but I have a feeling if the piece was really challenging, I might not even be able to remember any of it. Hmm, maybe I'll do another video. Happy practicing and I'll see you next time.